Hello, traders. Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com, July 26, 2020. In this edition of your weekend video newsletter, we'll discuss the indices after three consecutive bullish weeks for the S&P 500 with one down week and the NASDAQ posting two down weeks following two bullish weeks. So the markets are consolidating recent gains. We did see the NYSE managing to eke out a modest gain along with the Nikkei. While the major mover on international indices was the Bombay Stock Exchange up 3% last week following through on a multi-week rally off of the lows. We did see the FANG stocks mixed last week with Amazon and Apple closing green and Roku managing a bullish close as well. Sector rotation appears to be the culprit for the pullback in the indices. This past week we saw 9 of 12 sectors maintaining strength while leading sectors like XLK had started to weaken. We have XLE, XLF, and XLI seeing the most action on Thursday while those growth stocks did pull back. HYG and junk suggest equities are fine. Bonds were at the top of their 16-week ranges and we did see gold rally. U.S. dollar fell but now is oversold and ready to bounce. So the gains that we saw in gold might consolidate in the short term. The heat map is still improving. We did see strength in builders, transports, retail, consumer discretionary, and material stocks. All of those showing relative strength. With the XLY XLP ratio still bullish and rising, showing equities to be in favor over bonds. While the heat map for international countries remained neutral with Brazil outperforming, Europe is neutral, China, Japan, and Southeast Asia were weak. We'll look at some IBD 50 names that are showing relative strength, as well as some Market Smith Growth 250 candidates, in addition to some top volume percent gainers in green. The Dow 30 industrials only have five stocks that look bullish, with Boeing actually looking very bearish. If it loses the moving averages, it could drop precipitously on news that they had delayed the 777 release. Bukowski is showing 505 green with a CPI signal half red since July the 24th, moving from 97% last week, very bullish, to 25% this week, which is bearish with 15 bearish patterns, 5 bullish patterns, and more importantly, 356 patterns waiting for breakout. We could see a bounce this week, so we're still in day trade mode, short-term swings. And we should remind you that VIX is the key. If VIX moves lower, you can expect to see SPY and the S&P 500 charge up towards that 3280, 3300 resistance level. Ultimately, 3350 is major overhead resistance with support for the SPY at 320 and 3200 for the S&P 500 this week. Bottom line, let's wait for the markets to open on Monday and Tuesday, see how the markets adapt to the move below the 9 EMA by the S&P 500. The 21 day is just below. So there's a possibility we could test that key moving average in the short term. A close below the 21 day would be a sell signal. If we look at a Rinko chart of the spiders, which eliminates the noise, we very quickly can see that we're on a series of white bricks. We just broke out above the June highs. We are in an uptrend. Until we see a red brick, this is telling us to look for more bullish action in the future until we see our first red brick, which could come on a loss of the 21 day moving average, the red line. If we do test that area and bounce, that would be a good sign similar to what we saw three weeks ago where we tested the 9 and 21 day and remain above up until Friday where we produce that doji. Note that RSI is still above 50. If that turns back up, that would be bullish based on price action, of course. 
we had two red days in terms of volume, but they were below average for the most part. And the bears have lost control until we can see a crossover and a drop. So that would give us a lower high on the MACD and a higher high. So that would be a bearish divergence that we need to keep an eye on. If we were to lose the 21 day this week, we would issue a sell signal short term. Look for a test of the 50 day or the 200 day, both of which crossed just over two weeks ago and continue to trend higher. Those of you with more of a bearish mindset need to pay attention to the S&P equal weight index where no big cap is more important than any other. Uh, the 200 day is just below. The 50 day is about to cross. The 21 day is, tra is trending right through the 200 day at the end of the week. We also see the number of stocks trading above their 50 period moving average pulling back to 73%, which is actually a good thing in that any charge higher at this point would mean that we're not overbought. So there's also a possibility we come back and test the 200 day along with the spiders pulling back below the 21 day, potentially coming back to the 50 day in this particular chart as these two indicators CCI and A50R could pull back in a little bit more. So if that happens, we'll watch out for it on Monday and Tuesday. Just pay attention to the 21 day on the S&P 500. We also pulled back on the NASDAQ 100 as gross stocks underperform value again. So we had two bullish weeks followed by these past two bearish weeks, consolidating a recent gain of more than 62% from the low in March to the highs in July. We did see above average volume, so those are distribution weeks. MACD is still above its signal line, so there is still the potential for some follow through. I am thinking that we could see a little bit more downside consolidation, maybe to the top of this candle four weeks ago. A pullback to breakout area would most likely get bought. RSI would be near 50 more than likely. So that would be an area where I would definitely be looking for positions in growth stocks going into the end of the year. Those traders looking for a further pullback in the NASDAQ 100 for bearish reasons or if you want to buy puts would want to see Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Netflix, and NVIDIA all moving lower. We did see a bounce towards the end of Friday. So many of these didn't make it back to the 50-day moving average before bouncing. Facebook was below the 50-day. Netflix was very close, as was Apple. But for the most part, these look okay going into the week. So in the case of Microsoft, for example, that had earnings. I'm looking at the 50-day moving average with the potential for a test. If we do see a test of the 50-day and buyers step up, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, if it's another bullish day, that would be a pretty decent entry, in my opinion. So we'll wait and see what happens on Monday. If we come down and test the 50-day, maybe we hammer off of this level and we follow through on Tuesday, I would wait for Tuesday for a safer entry. That would potentially set up and move back to the highs. Microsoft's probably one of my favorite stocks, though it is up considerably from the March lows up to the recent highs. So it wouldn't be inconceivable for this to pull back a little further, back to this volume by price band around 185, though I'm hoping that it doesn't happen, rather that it bounces on Monday and Tuesday at the 50 day, at the 50 day. IWM managed a pretty decent week. It faded though, back to the 200 day moving average after a big gain off the March lows of more than 59%. We do have RSI on this weekly time frame still above 50. So any kind of follow through that takes out last week's high around 150 would definitely be a bullish signal as small caps lead and are considered a risk on, risk off signal. So if IWM does rally, that would be bullish for equities. If it fails, uh, watch for HYG and junk, which are currently bullish to reverse as well. If that doesn't happen, We'll have some mixed signals this week going into the end of July. 
This weekend I was writing in the Slack channels talking about stops and things that we need to pay attention to as reference points. In this particular case, we have NYAD near a new higher high, potentially giving us a little pullback. We'll look for a higher low and a continuation. We did have two blue elder sticks, which is telling you to anticipate a pause. If for some reason Monday, Tuesday, we get red elder sticks, that would be caution and a sell signal respectively after the first and second red stick. That said though, we have the number of new highs beating out new lows up until Thursday, Friday, where the moving average turned back down. So we'll be very interested to see how the New York Stock Exchange and this particular index fares this week, whether we're going to be bullish or bearish going into the end of July. I also mentioned TRBCX, the T Row Price Blue Chip Growth Fund this weekend, which has moved back above the February March highs already, along with the NASDAQ. Many of these blue chip stocks are outperforming, which is another reason to believe that rotation is what's happening at the moment and not a reason to panic and look for a rollover in the market and a retest of the 50 day. That said, once again, if the S&P 500 and the Spiders lose the 21-day moving average early next week, we could look for a potential sell signal and for a test of the 50-day in the short term. This particular growth fund, however, is consolidating recent gains. Could come back a little bit more and test this breakout level. I have this in my 401k and IRAs as a favorite when the markets are bullish. The VIX 60-minute signal is also on a bearish signal Thursday and Friday. It looks like it's about to emerge. If it does and give us a bullish signal on Monday, Tuesday, that would mean we'd look for higher lows and then potentially a higher high on this 60-minute time frame. As the daily time frame continues to print lower highs and potentially a lower low this week, if we can't get back above the blue line, the 50-day moving average, it is in a bearish trend, so either we're going to break back above the 50-day moving average, which we've tested several times over the last few weeks, or as we saw on Friday, we got rejected, closed near the lows of the session. There's a possibility that VIX continues to move lower. If that happens, institutions, market makers, and dealers will have to close their short put positions because of premium collapsing and they would have to turn around and buy futures to hedge their positions. So watch for VIX to move lower. That would be bullish for equity traders. The bond stock ratio in the lower panel between the 10-year and the S&P 500 is starting to turn back up. A move back to the op opposite direction or higher would be bearish for equities. A move lower and continuation to the downside would be bullish equities coming into this week. That said, if we consider what junk bonds are telling us, this is saying that investors are okay with taking on additional risk. Hence, this is called a risk on indicator. When junk bonds are moving higher, that means that investors are willing to take the additional risk by chasing price action higher in junk bonds and HYG, high yield corporate debt. If they continue to do that, that would be bullish for equities as these risk on indicators continue to point to a higher disposition and sentiment in the market being more bullish. We can see how the reverse is the case when RSI dropped off and price action in HYG led the markets lower. These same investors took the risk off the table felt there was too much risk in the market for a pullback and were correct once again. While junk bonds and high yield corporate debt do tell us to be more bullish in our sentiment, we do have TLT continuing to move higher. That could be an indication that there is some safety minded investors out there that would rebalance their portfolios and buy TLT. Whereas if you look at the shorter end of the curve, SHY, we have bonds continuing to move higher while the middle, the seven, 10 year bond started to come back a little bit, IEF and 
shy continued to trend a little bit higher. So there are some safety money traders out there rebalancing their portfolios. Much of that concern could be the U.S. dollar, of course, which is at 52-week lows. With that in mind, however, we did overshoot this low that we saw back in March. RSI is now oversold. Most likely, we're going to see a bounce in the short term. Every time this got down to oversold levels, we saw a fairly nice bounce in the weeks that followed. Eight weeks, four weeks, and then we move sideways. This time around, we had two, three weeks higher on the U.S. dollar, and we're looking for the same thing with RSI pointing to a potential bounce this week. While the dollar moved lower over that time period, we saw copper moving higher. So copper, again, is a forward-looking indicator. It bounces before the markets do usually, and usually leads the markets lower when it tops out. Right now, it looks like copper is consolidating the gains that we've seen since the March lows. If copper does break out at some point in the short term, that would indicate that we should see home builders, construction, home improvement, and building supply continue to outperform as they did over the last few weeks. We also see the correlation between gold and US dollar. If the dollar does bounce and start to rally, would most likely recommend taking some profits up here around 1900 Look for a little pullback to the moving averages and then look for a bounce in the short term. Finally, there is crude oil. West Texas crude in this particular case on the weekly time frame continues its move higher. Eight-week tight consolidation, an ascending pennant or an ascending flag or channel pattern as we continue to rise right up against this 2018 December low pivot that is resistance. If we get above that level, look for crude to come back and potentially test the 50 and $60 a barrel uh, mark. If that does happen, that would be a bullish correlation and we'd expect to see equities continue to move higher into the November elections. A rejection here would be bearish for equities most likely. The sector heat map, when you read this from left to right, is updated every Friday. We can clearly see back in June where we had crimson red has gradually changed each month to less and less oranges and reds and more and more lime greens and yellows, which means the sectors are actually improving rather than putting in a top and most likely showing rotation rather than a bearish move to the downside. Now this could all change of course, but at least from what's indicated on the heat map, it looks like rotation at the present time. In addition, we see the international markets faring better. There's a few yellows and oranges, but some lime greens in here. Of course, Brazil outperformed last week. We talked about India and the Bombay Stock Exchange, a big move from 8% to 10%. That's looking pretty good as we start trading this last week of July. We also pointed out, as far as sector rotation, another confirmation as these sectors rotate in and out of favor, each quadrant, the leading sector in the top right, improving sector in the top left, lagging sector, bottom left, and weakening sector, bottom right. You can see XLK is entering into the weakening sector while XLC Communications, which has Facebook to thank for the big move down last week. XLB and XLY are still inside of the leading sector. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sectors that are either improving or strengthening and leading. So XLI, XLF, and XLE have the most promise while Real estate is starting to come up. If it gets across this threshold, that would be an improving sector. Obviously, XLU, XLP is starting to move higher as well. These can be tracked. You could see the rotation if you just grab and scrub from the March lows, what led out of the March lows into uh, April, May, June, and then in July. So at this point, it looks like sector rotation going into this week. Further proof or confirmation can also be derived from this chart or 
ratio between consumer discretionary XLY and consumer staples XLP. As this ratio rises, it's bullish for the markets. You can see that was back in 2018. Up until it flattened out prior to the rollover in the fourth quarter of 2018, where we had that 20% drawdown. This looks pretty much like what we're seeing right now, with no indication that we're starting to change direction just yet. Note back in 2018, when we had that 20% drawdown, that we had a couple of months of flattening before we had a sell signal. So here in February, the most recent turn down, this even gave you a nice signal after a couple of weeks started to turn down, even if you missed the first one or two bearish days where we gave a sell signal. As this turned over, it told you that institutions were positioning in a bearish approach, trading a lot of XLU and XLP. And right now we can see the trend is definitely bullish. And to summarize, we can look at the sectors individually looking for the sectors that are above the rising 21 day and 50 day moving average, the blue and red line respectively. For example, IYT, the transports are flagging. They're not dropping below the 21 day or the 50 day. Materials also look good. Communications, again, that's Facebook that they can thank for the pullback. That's sitting at the 21 day, but a spinning top. We have XLK probably gonna pull back a little bit more this week. But industrials and financials look pretty good. So we're not, we need to keep an eye on these three sectors that are seeing some rotation and relative strength. While XLP, XLU, and XLV are okay, consumer discretionary, which you want to see moving higher in the previous ratio I just showed you, is bullish. So if we get a bounce in XLY relative to the XLP, that ratio will continue to move higher. So XLY also looks pretty good going into this week, while our main focus will be financials and industrials most likely. Here are the IBD 50 stocks. These are five minute charts. I just wanna point out VWAP, price action above VWAP in the case of Alexandria Realty. The dash line is VWAP, Looking for stocks that close above VWAP is really important, especially going into Monday and Tuesday. We can see that Cadence Design, Chegg is all moving higher. We have Dexcom above VWAP at the close. I know Mikey was talking about this one this weekend. This looks really strong. It's at the 21 day moving average. We've got a hammer. Looking for a follow through this week. RSI is above 50. MACD is just below its signal line, moving sideways. We'd like to see more volume on any follow through. While we'd like all of these stocks that we're considering trading above the 21 day, there are some that are testing the 50 day moving average, the red line, like Adobe, which could be a nice setup this week. Applied Materials also fits that bill. If that pulls back to the 50 day, we'll be looking for Monday, Tuesday bullish candles. The first bullish candle, if that occurs on Monday, Tuesday, if it's a bullish candle again and a follow through in a little bit higher high, higher low to start the day, that would be a safer entry. So first day bullish, Monday, second day follow through higher high, higher low to start the day bullish. That would be a good setup going into the week and a safer entry. Cadence Design, Chegg, of course, bouncing at the 21 day moving average. Many of this look pretty strong going into the week. Dexcom we just talked about. Franco Nevada, if gold continues to move higher, I'd expect to see Franco Nevada also breaking higher and trending. RSI is showing muscle. We're above an area of very little supply. 52 week highs, volume increasing, showing institutions are very active and MACD is above its signal line and trending. It would take a lot of momentum to slow Franco Nevada down at this point. So look for gold to either move higher or lower next week and trade FNV accordingly. We'll also be watching for strength to continue and advanced micro devices is a possibility we trade inside of that 58, 59 zone. There was a lot of options that traded last week. Congratulations if you took this one. I had some shares, but no options. That took off to the upside on Friday. Nice gap up on over 200 million shares. So that was pretty nice. 
and a reason to believe that maybe semiconductors do muster some strength even after Intel's poor performance on Friday. Applied materials sitting right above the 50-day moving average with a spinning top doji. You can see that buyers stepped up at the low of the day and pulled prices back up towards the midline. A bullish bounce on Monday, Tuesday that gets through the 21-day would signal that this trend is most likely going to continue. There's been several times it pulled back below the 21-day, but buyers stepped up. You can see that after the second bullish day, a safer entry and a follow-through for a swing trade. Autodesk also subscription software for the construction, architecture, and engineering industry groups. If this bounces near the 50-day or if it bounces on Monday, Tuesday, starts to move back up towards the top of this range, then we'd look for that reversal as a potential day trade and swing trade if it closes in the upper half of its daily range like we see on this candle on Monday last week. Cadence Design, same idea, 21 day just below. Buyers stepping up at the low of the day right at the 9 EMA on Friday. We'll look for confirmation on Monday and Tuesday. Chegg has been a winner since this gap up on the last earnings. Coming back to the 21 day, buyers stepped up and each time this has tested the 21 day over the last six weeks, buyers have stepped up. So we're looking for the same thing to repeat. RSI is still above 50 going into the week. Church and Dwight trending above the 9 EMA. Facebook, I'd like to believe there's a potential for a three candle reversal. Morningstar Doji. Looking for RSI to turn back up. We'll see, if we do see a very bullish day on Monday, that would be an indication that we might see a reversal. Futu Holdings, I'm not big on Chinese stocks at this time, but the stock does look pretty bullish. If we get a follow through on Monday, that would be the second bullish day that I was referring to before, above the 21 day. RSI is already pointing higher. If it gets above this volume by price area, this could retest the highs. So keep an eye on Futu this week as volume indicate institutions have been pretty active. GenMab looking for a bounce on Monday, Tuesday. Clack almost oversold on RSI, sitting on the 50-day moving average. If this loses the 50-day, looks like this next level is a potential area for a test around 180, 176 or so, as volume was above average on Friday. Kirkland Lake Gold along with Franklin, Nevada, this looks like it's gonna continue higher. Microsoft looking for a bounce at the 50-day. Netflix looking for a bounce near the 50-day. Volume increasing. While RSI is starting to turn back up, this could be a key reversal on this one as well. Along with Roku, not a bad looking chart considering the move that we saw on the indices on Thursday, Friday. This is holding up very well above the 21-day. The Close back above the 90 MA with RSI rising. Look for a follow through on Monday. NVIDIA, same idea. If we get a bullish follow through day, that would be day two and a potential safer entry. RSI is still above 50 and volume increased on Friday. So that's an indication we might see a follow through along with NVIDIA, maybe leading the semiconductors this week, despite the lackluster performance of Intel on the gap down. PayPal trying to hold this level, also watching Square, MasterCard, and Visa. Regeneron Pharmaceutical, one of the few pharmaceutical companies that saw buyers at the end of the day on Friday. We're watching how the 50-day holds. If we get a bullish day on Monday, Tuesday, that might be a trade as well. Rest Med, same idea. At the 9 EMA, we got a hanging man or hammer. Our size showing muscle and volume showing that institutions, for the most part, have been busy. Lower volume on Thursday and Friday, so that's a good indication. If we see higher volume on Monday, Tuesday, that would be good as well for the bulls. Service now, not bad, sitting right on the 21 day. Buyers did step up. Doji spinning top on Friday. Look for RSI to turn back up. Look at this volume by price support zone. A lot of trading that gone, went on in this area. So look for a follow through and a bounce this week. Volume was below average on this pullback, so that's good as well. Sprouts Farmers Market, looking for a bounce. RSI is still above 50. Trade Desk, same idea, sitting right near the 21 day. A move back above the 21 day would indicate RSI is probably going to follow through. Like to see above average volume. Thermo Fisher, buyers at the 9 EMA. Looking for a follow through. MACD still above its signal line. 
Tractor supply looking very bullish. Went to our tractor supply not too long ago. Lots and lots of people there. Looking for this trend that's been holding above the 9 EMA since mid-June to continue. That being the last retest of the 21 day since the April push back above the 9, 21 day and 50 day. Also resulting in a bounce on above average volume. Also like to see Viva Systems continue to move higher. That's holding right at the 21 day moving average as well. Nice trend since April. Maybe it's a little overbought. I'd like to see a lot of these stocks that have been trending since the April lows to continue moving higher. We'll watch for that on Monday and Tuesday. While human resources stocks like Workday did pull back to the 50-day, there's a possibility that we get a bounce here. Watch for a bounce Monday, Tuesday. Safer injury would be on the second bullish day that holds near this volume by price band. Support, if it fails and loses the 50-day, in all of the cases that we previously talked about where the 50-day was within reach, that would give us more of a bearish indication and most likely the markets would be closing below the 21-day. Don't see that happening just yet. Again, it's because of that sector rotation we were pointing out as a potential catalyst for this recent consolidation and, and range-bound action. Zoom video has had quite a run, looking like it's headed back to the 50-day moving average. That said, every time I've said look for a pullback and zoom, it winds up moving in the opposite direction, just as a side note. Additional stocks to look at in the opening monologue, I go through the relative strength names and listed the ones that I've already gone through. CentOS is pretty interesting because this is an economic indicator in the sense that the company rents and sells uh, corporate uniforms and identity programs. This is an indication of strength when this is moving higher. A big cup and handle pattern breaking out as it indicates strength in the economy as this company sells uniforms and identity programs to 1 million clients worldwide. It could be an indication that things are starting to get a little bit better. News this weekend about a vaccine by the end of the summer would definitely have a bullish effect on the markets and something that we need to see going forward. So make sure you check out those stocks in the opening monologue. You also have the volume percent screen, 100% volume gainers. These are the ones that have a over 100% in volume. I went through those stocks as well. The ones that look good are the ones that are listed in green. In addition to the five stocks from the Dow Industrials that you're looking at, these are the five minute charts. Note that Boeing closed at the low of the day. That is forecasting a potential loss of this area if RSI moves lower on the announcement that they're going to delay the release of the 777 rendering a possible short in Boeing while other stocks moved higher like Johnson & Johnson had a really nice rally end of day back to VWAP keeping an eye on stocks like Johnson & Johnson coming back to the 21 day looking for a bounce while the others like McDonald's continue to look good McDonald's looks like it's going to break out out of this flag. Home Depot also looks good. It was trending along with Lowe's from its industry group. Uh, 3M also looks good. Microsoft, we're looking for a bounce at the 50 day. And Verizon thrust higher on Friday. Okay, so that's going to do it for me. This is Cousin Vinny coming to you from the closingprint.com with your weekend video newsletter. We'll send out a watch list later tonight around 11, 11.30 on the East Coast, 8, 8.30 on the West Coast. So be sure to look for that in your inbox. Otherwise, have a great weekend. I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. <music>